What do you think of when you dream of Hawaii? If you're like most people, you think of a paradise of palm trees, hula dancers, and the big... To visitors, or as the natives say, malahinis, Waikiki also means modern hotels and swimming pools. Perhaps you think of a lovely girl and her friendly aloha. For some, there's the thrill of a surf ride, or quiet, peaceful beaches, where you can relax on the warm white sand and sun in solitude. To many people, Hawaii also means a paradise of beautiful flowers and lovely Polynesian maidens frolicking in freshwater lagoons. But it wasn't always that way. In the beginning, there was nothing but the vast, trackless Pacific. For millions of years, there were distant rumblings beneath the sea until finally, huge underwater mountains broke forth into the light. With the passing of time, the lava cooled, forming the chain of islands we call Hawaii. Among the first creatures to come to the islands were birds. They carried in their bodies the seeds of many of the plants that flourish here today. Cut deep canyons, and soon the land was green. These are exciting islands. Let's take a closer look. At first, the islands were uninhabited, bleak, lonely, waiting for the people. In the valleys, the vegetation flourished, and there were pools of fresh, sweet water. It was inevitable that man should eventually find these islands, and man did come from across the seas, probably from Bora Bora or Tahiti. The first ones may have looked very much like this pure-blooded Hawaiian. Today, Hawaii is a paradise of people from many lands living together in harmony. Japanese, Chinese, Portuguese, Spanish, American, Swedish, Korean, Samoan, they're what author James Mishner has called the golden people. They include some of the prettiest girls in the world. The first Hawaiians left unmistakable evidence of their presence in the form of rock paintings and carvings. 
Another legacy of the early Hawaiians is their musical language. Even today, on the busiest streets of Honolulu, their melodic words are everywhere. Hawaii is a land with an international flavor. The Japanese influence is found everywhere. They have gangster movies, too. Each year, Japanese graves are decorated with gaily colored paper lanterns and flowers. Food is put out to nourish the returning spirits. You see the influence of many cultures as you travel the islands. You see Buddhist temples, white steeples, tiny chapels, majestic buildings and inspiring monuments. Many churches of many faiths dot the islands today as a testimony to the early work of the missionaries. The Episcopal Church of the Holy Innocents in Lahaina is decorated with biblical scenes painted from life with Hawaiian figures. What is Hawaii really like? One day early in our island travels, Chuck and I ran across a fellow who helped us to find the answer. This friendly little Japanese Hawaiian, K.K. Tagawa by name, is a professional photographer who travels the islands and knows them inside and out. K.T., as he likes to be called, was working with two lovely local models and he invited us to stick around. If we had a question, he had the answer. To Kei Tagawa, whose father came from Japan as a farmer, Hawaii is an agricultural paradise. Deep in the lush Hanalei Valley, farmers grow taro and rice and irrigated paddies, just as their Chinese and Japanese ancestors did for thousands of years before them. Here we put on our telephoto lens to get a closer view of the crops and workers in the valley below. Another important crop is the coconut. Today, the only large coconut groves are on the island of Kauai, where they were once the property of kings. Palm trees live only about a hundred years, and new trees are planted next to the old ones to preserve the groves. On the wet volcanic slopes of the big island of Hawaii grow the strong, fragrant Kona coffee beans. Frequent rain makes the coffee flourish. It also falls on Kodak photographers just like it does on everyone else. Maybe you don't think of Hawaii as cattle country, but here is the famous half million acre Parker Ranch the second largest ranch in America. The island's number one money crop is sugar cane. 25% of all American cane comes from 18 square miles in Hawaii. It takes 2,000 pounds of water to grow one pound of sugar. Sugar cane is a popular local confection too. Sort of like chewing on balsa wood soaked in sugar water. One day we were startled to see the entire countryside on fire. First, we thought the farmer had lost his crop. But we learned that burning off the sugarcane fields is a deliberate operation to remove the useless dried husks. 
only the juicy stalks are left. While the fields are still smoldering, heavy equipment is moved in and the sugar cane is loaded for transport to the refineries. Much of it is shipped to California for processing. Pineapple growing is the second largest industry in Hawaii. In the summer, the fields are loaded with luscious fruit. Chuck and I had eaten canned pineapple all our lives, but never really tasted it until this day. Let's take a closer look at the pineapple industry. Night and day during the ripening season, monstrous machines stride back and forth across the fields, attended by busy pickers. A standard pineapple is used for reference and they pick only that size or larger. The workers wear heavy leather aprons or trousers and gloves to protect themselves against the razor-like leaves. Most fields are picked three or four times. Special trucks are saddled by the machine and the fruit is dumped into the waiting boxes. When a truck is loaded, the machine picks up its skirts and waits patiently for the beginning of another endless cycle. A pineapple-shaped water tank stands atop the Dole Cannery in Honolulu. Special heister loaders remove the truck bodies and store them in long rows in the cannery yards. proper time, the entire truckload is dumped on an endless sorting belt, and the fascinating blend of automation and hand labor begins. It may seem like a lot of trouble to carry movie lights or flash guns on a long trip, but good indoor pictures make it all worthwhile. Hawaii supplies 75% of the world's pineapple products. Most of the cargo is shipped by huge freighters to ports all over the world. What is Hawaii really like? For visitors, it's a tourist paradise. Thousands flock to Hawaii by jet plane or in great white luxury liners. To capture some of the excitement of boat day in Hawaii, 
Jack went far out in the harbor and then came in on the liner with the same flourish as the paying customers. It's time to grab your camera as the skilled swimmers pull up alongside to dive for coins tossed by the arriving tourists. first hula dancers, and now you know where Jack's camera has been pointed all this time. First places most tourists head for is Waikiki Beach. Waikiki is a family playground with exciting things to see and do and photograph. Waikiki is no sleepy tropical paradise. It's a busy, carefree place where life is casual, where people walk around in swimming suits and shorts. You can rent a car here as cheaply as on the mainland. Jack and I felt rather out of place with our conservative mainland clothes. So like most tourists, we immediately went shopping for something a little more colorful. It was fun on our first day to stroll the beaches and enjoy the scenery. Surfing is so popular at Waikiki, they really need a waterborne traffic cop. Of course, it's a little safer for the timid to take an outrigger ride or sail majestically by in one of the graceful catamarans. Whether you like sunbathing or swimming, it's fun to be in Waikiki. Some tourists are surprised to find that Honolulu is a bustling city of almost a half million people with its share of modern buildings and traffic problems. One popular spot for tourists is the statue of King Kamehameha I. The Hawaii Visitors Bureau has done a fine job at marking tourist spots. These signs make good titles for your slide and movie shows. Want to see Honolulu all at once? Come with us up to that restaurant perched high atop a modern office building. From here you get a view of the city in all directions. This restaurant revolves once every hour. Hold on to your seats as through the magic of photography we take an hour's tour of Honolulu in exactly 45 seconds.
if you'd like to see Honolulu at a more leisurely pace, let's take a walking tour of the city. One of the enjoyable things about walking around with a camera in hand is that you are always ready for the unexpected. For example, we found an outdoor art exhibit where we could photograph a variety of colorful paintings and wood carvings. Right across the street from the art exhibit is Kapiolani Park, site of the Kodak Hula Show. Three to four thousand people jam the bleachers to see the free show that Kodak's been putting on since 1937. It's a wonderful opportunity to see and photograph a great variety of authentic Polynesian entertainment. star of the show is the graceful Lila, whose performance has thrilled thousands of Malahinis. Sometimes the show really slides into overdrive. If you sit near the front, you'll run the happy risk of being kissed properly by one of the jolliest Hawaiians of them all, Muriel. If all this hula dancing looks like fun, you can have a free lesson. And you'll probably look like this. There is, of course, more to this lovely island of Oahu than the city of Honolulu. By sightseeing bus or rented car, let's explore a bit. You can see the volcanic origin of the islands in the rocky coastline. Blue waves beating on the huge rocks often surge up through natural blowholes. If you want to cool off, visit Nu'uanu Pali. Pali means cliff in Hawaiian, and this famous spot is characterized by constant high winds. The wind makes picture-taking difficult, but the beautiful view from up here makes it all worthwhile.